It'd probably be something you'd never forget, and I don't think anyone would ever, ever let you forget it. I don't want my name in lights when that happens, but if he hits it and he hits it legit, then I'd like to be one of the first guys to shake his hands. I mean, it's a great accomplishment. Kind of look at it every either way. Your name would be in trivia questions for years to come. The Cincinnati Reds are at Wrigley Field the next to last weekend of the season. There it is. Here's the fastball. Here it comes. I mean, that, that'd be cool. I mean, tell him. Tell him it's coming. Here it is. I'll tell my catcher, hey, tell him it's coming. Someone asked me, would you be upset if you gave up the home run to break the record? I said, no, I mean, you're part of history, and that's what it's all about. And he came right after me. He didn't care. He was aggressive, and, and you know, he, he wasn't afraid. I mean, that's, that's what I would want to be remembered by. Downing and Stallard were aggressive, and they weren't afraid. But that's not what they're remembered for. Dick Chap, thank you. You know, sports center anchors practicing up on all the booyahs. Got it. Gones. Ding dong, the pitcher's dead. That's no beanie baby. Tastes like chicken and <laughs> get out of town and I mean it. Prepping for history? <laughs> Forget it. We won't get a chance. When McGuire or Sosa hit 62, it will be what we in TV call sound full, where we take the call from the play-by-play -play announcer at the game. So in part four of our series Thursday, we turn our attention to those play-by-play -play announcers. I think those are the moments that those of us who sit in a play-by-play -play chair always dream about. What would you say? I have no idea what I'm going to say when he hits the ball. It'll surprise me when I listen to it, maybe. You now it's going to shoot through my mind every time he walks to the plate if he's at 60 or 61. And I'm going to be saying to myself, don't blow it. Yeah, I know what I would say before he hits it. I'd, I'd have it set up so they would kind of live forever because the moment, the moment will live forever. Looking forward to that on Thursday. Up next, Did You Know? And hitting takes this Did You Know off. Pitching takes center stage. Excuse me, is the seat taken? With the power of Visa Platinum, you can rent a villa in St. Bart's, while away the long tropical days, sharing Coquille St. Junk with Nastasia Kinski. Of course, you're fired. You'd lose your job, you hate Coquille St. Jock, and Nastasia is actually dating a European kickboxer called... Serge. But with the exceptional purchase power of a Visa Platinum card, isn't it really nice to know you could? Visa Platinum, it's everywhere you want to be. We like to say, with Coors beers, you get a taste of the Rockies. You see, all the barley we use in brewing grows only in the Rocky Mountains. Right here in Colorado, or Idaho, Wyoming, or Montana. So you know that little picture of the Rocky Mountains on our labels? Truth in packaging. It's ESPN Sunday Night Football, ladies and gents. We kick things off with the Raiders and the Chiefs. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Coverage begins at 8.15. Oh, see, I would watch that. Hi, this is Chris Myers. Hope you'll join us later today. We'll talk NFL up close with Raider quarterback Jeff George. They open against the Chiefs on Sunday night. We'll talk about the new changes on the team offensively and new head coach John Gruden. That's up close at 6 Eastern. We'll see you then. All right, Chris, thanks. We look forward to that. Earlier in this edition of Sports Center, we showed you former Cy Young Award winner Randy Johnson besting four-time Cy Young Award winner Greg Maddox in the first ever meeting between the two future Hall of Fame pitchers. Did you know that the Hall of Fame pitchers who faced each other the most during their careers are Christy Mathewson and Three Finger Brown? They faced each other 23 times from 1903 to 1916. Brown's team won 12 of those. Mathewson's 373 career wins. Tied for third all-time, Matthewson and Brown both rank in the top five in ERA for their careers. Two things you just can't be tired of, chasing history and sports center. They're both in your immediate future. Coming up next on Sports Center, Mark McGuire muscles closer to the home run record while slamming Sammy tries to keep pace. Two of baseball's hottest hurlers square off in Hotlanta. The Yankees go for an even hundred against the swing and A's. A fallen angel may not help Anaheim's playoff hopes. Troy Aikman takes one for the team, we'll explain. Warren Moon prepares to rise to the occasion for the Seahawks. The Buckeyes bruiser finds out if he made the grade. 
You can have a flashy swing, you can flash the leather, but sorry, no flash photography. If you can't catch the show, let someone know. I call my parents on my cell phone and tell them to take the ESPN Sports Center. <laughs> Hi again, Sports Center hipping you to what's up. Alongside Steve Levy, I'm Stuart Scott. Coming up on the program, in addition to the items already mentioned, was Mike Tyson fighting mad? Is Jerry West staying there? And will ID the Saints franchise player? But first, going against baseball lore, great hitting beats great pitching to the top of the show. Yeah, and just how many top of the shows can Mark McGuire make? How many top of the shows in a row can Mark McGuire make? 11-year-old Jason Duncan and 17-year-old Michael Pitts, once normal kids, now celebrities, after retrieving McGuire's two home runs Tuesday. Duncan won the mad dash for number 56 after falling through the tarp. Pitt saw where number 56 landed, so crawled under the tarp as McGuire came up to bat again, then, quote, jumped up, got the ball, and beat everybody off with his shoe. Both young men met Big Mac, gave the balls back in exchange for autograph balls, bats, jerseys, and a chance to watch Wednesday's game from Don Smiley's Skybox. There's a chain link fence trying to keep people out from the tarp. Maybe Billy the Marlin might catch one. Top four, cards up three zip, Gannon third, Tatis on second, Placido Polanco on first. McGuire thinking about his 11 career grand slams. Pitcher Kent Merker, I'm feeling you. His first career home run and 212 career at bats. The second pitcher to hit a grand slam this year. The sixth pitcher to hit a slam this decade. Cards up seven zip. Top seven, Mack up against Brian Edmondson. Edmondson throws way inside to McGuire, possibly a brushback pitch. Hey, Brian, have you seen McGuire's arms? Ray Lankford at third, and then I'm not a player, I just crush a lot. Three pitches later, two run shot, 497 feet, the third longest home run ever at Pro Player. Home run number 58 for McGuire, his third in two nights. Check out the flash bulbs as the ball goes halfway up the upper deck. Mack celebrates with a few punches. His trademark routine with Brian Jordan. He said later the pitch was probably three inches off the ground. I'm amazed I went down and got it. The fan who caught 58 had to be safely escorted out. McGuire with 125 RBI this year. Top eight. Cards up 12-3. Mack up one inning later. Can we go 59? Here's the pitch and there it goes. Do you believe this? Once again, Mark McGuire hits a home run here in South Florida. McGuire has 59. He pulls to within two of Roger Maris, and the legend grows for the St. Louis Cardinals. A 458-foot blast. He sets a personal high in a season for home runs with 59. 59 is also more homers than any right-handed hitter has ever jacked. Four homers in two days, four curtain calls in two days. Oh, yeah. By the way, Cardinals beat the Marlins 14-4. to McGuire, a man of his word. He said all year he didn't want to talk about the record until somebody had 50 in September. It's September 3rd. Big Mac has 59, and even he says it's crunch time, time to make history. In his last two games, those four homers, 1,877 feet. 400 media people were at the game, including our Jeremy Schapp, who we'll hear from later. But afterward, Big Mac talked about history. I passed myself, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel pretty proud of passing myself, um, especially doing it in one league. Um, again, unbelievable. I've watched the games that Sammy's played in, and, and they're embracing just as much, and same with Griffey. And, and the main thing, it, it, the best thing can happen to baseball right now. And, uh, you know, you know, I know all of us are feeling great inside. You know, America is embracing us, but they're also embracing baseball. Cubs with a one-game lead in the NL wildcard race, but who cares? Can Sosa keep up with McGuire? Top three runners at the corners. Barry Larkin, a 300 hitter. Grounds into the 6-4-3 double play. Cubs get out of trouble. Bottom six, Archbishop of Chicago, Francis Cardinal George in the booth. Sosa at the plate. Divine intervention. Well, I, w I want you to do one thing, Cardinal. I want you to bless this team because we need it. <laughs> Sosa hits a drive to right field. Back goes Tedogini to the wall. Goal! As soon as the Cardinal walks in here, Sammy hits his 56th home run. Sosa on and cracking. It's hindsight now, but he said later, before McGuire's He's night, Mark has the ability to come back tonight and hit two more. Steve Traxler was just blowing up. He got Jeffrey Hammonds, a 338 hitter. He got Brett Boone. 
He had five Ks. Bottom seven, the fans call for number 57, but Sosa swung in a 3-0 pitch. Flies out deep to left, but not enough. Still, he blew up. Sammy, two for four, hitting 312, 137 RBI this year. Top eight, Dimitri Young. Comes one to the gap in right center off Felix Heredia. Ed Taubensy and Barry Larkin score 44th double of the year for Young, two on reds. Bottom eight, Gary Gaetti rocking the fat wood. With the Cubs down 2-1, his 14th homer of the season, a two-run shot. He said afterwards, it's incredible to be able to do what Sammy and McGuire are doing. Cubs win! 4-2. You know, there's a picture of Hack Wilson accompanied by his final interview that hangs on the wall next to Sammy Sosa's locker. Talent isn't enough, said Hack in the interview. You need common sense and good advice. Sosa used all three in tying Hack Wilson's old NL record that McGuire now owns. He used common sense to relax after a three-strikeout game Tuesday, heeded the advice of hitting coach Jeff Pentland, who told him to go to the opposite field, and talent to SPAC number 56. Whew. I was seeing the ball much better today, and you know when I do that, I'm a, a much, much, much better hitter. And that, you know, that was happening today. I was more relaxed and more be patient. Well, that's why I love America. <laughs> it's a beautiful country. I mean, um, I said to you before. Now, uh, um, and Terry Hack Wilson is going to be my name in there too. And you know, the work, the record is there to somebody they break in. And I have to say, I'm, I am a pretty lucky guy to, to be, to be the man. Sammy, we're pretty lucky to be watching you. Later on SportsCenter, more on home runs and the pitchers who give them up, like Al Downing giving up number 715 to Hank Aaron. FYI, Sosa and McGuire have homered on the same day 19 times this season. A lot has changed since May 5th, 1989. Randy Johnson's last start against Atlanta, a 7-1 loss. Back then, he was just trying to establish himself as a big league pitcher. Now he is established as the big unit and arguably baseball's best. You have to throw arguably in there so people don't scream Greg Maddox at you. No need for a qualifier when you say the two hooked up in the most highly anticipated pitching matchup of this season and many other seasons. Atlanta was showdown city Wednesday night. Taking on the Astros is seen here on ESPN. And Evander Holyfield takes his shot at pitching throughout the first pitch. We flash back August 23rd. Maddox gave up three home runs to the Dodgers. Would he run into similar problems against Houston? Top of the second. Stroh's already down 1-0. Maddox facing Jeff Bagwell. Start of some trouble right there. Solo job. Bagwell's 29th. Would tie the game at one off. Still in the second, Maddox maybe sending a message to the big unit. How about that? Johnson now knows what it feels like to be on the other end. The Astros would send a message with their bats. Top of the fifth, runner on for Craig Biggio. And Biggio gets out of town. A two-run shot is 19th. Strohs with a 3-1 lead. Randy Johnson was throwing gas, bottom of the sixth. Javi Lopez, Andrew Jones, and then gets Greg Colburn to chase the ball in the dirt. Johnson retired 11 straight Braves at one point. More problems, though, for Maddox. The top of the seventh, Sean Barry gets out of town. This was supposed to be a scoreless, no-hitter type game. Instead, it's 4-1. Maddox giving up three home runs in a game for the second time in his career. Second time in two weeks. Meanwhile, Johnson's dominating, gets Javi there. Ten strikeouts on the night for the unit. 99th time he's done that, going in double digits. He would leave the game before the start of the ninth, cramp in his left leg. Afterwards, Johnson said Maddox is probably the best pitcher in baseball, along with Roger Clemens, and that Maddox is much more intelligent than he is. We told you Maddox allowed a career-high three homers for the second time in his last three starts. That, after not doing it, in the first 396 games of his career. Andres Galarraga's three-game suspension upheld. That's why he missed this one. Chipper called the experience of facing the big unit scary and something he wouldn't look forward to in the postseason. Randy Johnson is as good as it gets down the stretch. In full seasons, he's pitched.